Welcome to Rari, a small Chilean town forgotten by modern development, where tradition is valued above everything else, and it's also the setting for one of the most random adventures that we've ever embarked on. Over the next two weeks, we'll be helping Daniello move his herd of 56 semi-wild horses from his pasture at a lower elevation to a new pasture that's at 9,000 feet in the Chilean Andes. It's a nine-day journey and over 300 kilometers on horseback. Daniello is a Chilean cowboy, or an ajillo. We found photos of him on a random Chilean website, found their phone number, and asked him if we could tag along. Next thing you know, here we are. Daniello was built for this work, and it's all he knows. Ajillos are some of the most respected and skilled cowboys in the world. And then there's us. Two Canadians with about 25 minutes of horse experience combined. No Spanish, and pretty much no idea what we just got ourselves into. Since we had never really ridden horses before, Daniello gave us a quick crash course. Don't stand behind the mule, and watch out for the tarantulas. Daniello only speaks Spanish, so we weren't entirely sure what was going to happen on this trip, but luckily he has four other helpers this season that were all bilingual. Marie, an avid rider from the Netherlands, Eva, a horse trainer from Germany, Tomas, a horseshoe farrier from Finland, and Ryan, an engineer living in South America. The first day was spent mustering the horses from all the surrounding pastures and branding the herd before we head into the mountains. The branding ensures that no one steals Daniello's horses over the long summer. After a chaotic afternoon, the herd was finally ready to go. When we got back to the farm that night, we went to return our saddles and noticed our dinner hanging in the barn. It was strange at first, Sites like this would become normal in the days ahead. Next day, we woke up early to saddle up our horses and start the nine-day journey into the mountains. With Daniello leading the charge, we began to realize what was actually involved in traveling with 56 semi-wild horses. Sometimes the horses would wander off into nearby fields, try to hide behind trees, or sometimes just not want to move at all. We quickly learned it was our job to make sure the herd didn't get too off track. We'd prod the slow horses onwards with a simple yeah, which we copied from Daniela. Yeah, 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 yeah. Though we did our best to move the herd forward, sometimes we had to bring in the big guns. Our schedule was pretty simple. Wake up in a field, drink coffee, ride all day, lunch, siesta, and then ride until dinner. At lunch, Daniello would put an unpenetrable fence around the herd. Somehow they managed to escape almost every day, and part of me thinks that he just liked the challenge of losing them. We would take long breaks from the sun, make some food and coffee, and sometimes take a swim. Take the ride. El pobre gorrioncillo todavía la siguió pa ver si le cumplía lo que le prometió. One of the main dangers out here is getting too close to the other horses in the herd. Last year, a horse was kicked by another one, freaked out, and fell off a 200-foot cliff into the river below. This is one of the first stories that Daniello told us when we started riding. The train got slightly harder as the days went on, but we also became more confident. Dinner was always amazing. We'd start by rolling up some supapillas, a traditional Chilean snack that is easy to make and we ate way too many of. Daniela would follow this with asado, a traditional Chilean barbecue, slow cooked over the fire for three hours. This was definitely the best meal we've eaten in a long time. By the time dinner was done and a few cups of wine were downed around the fire, we would set up our beds next to our horses. Using the saddle as a pillow, we would drop our gear basically wherever it was easiest. Pendiente de un balcón, se hallaba una calada. 
Halfway through our trip, a massive storm rolled in and we had to quickly set up our tent for the night. Maybe it was the water or maybe it was the meat, but late that night I woke up sicker than I've ever been in my life. I can't, there's no way I can ride anymore. It's about 2 a.m. Ryan's outside throwing up again. I don't exactly know what we're gonna do tomorrow. With no choice but to continue on, I slunk myself over my horse like a bag of milk and endured one of the most painful two days of my life. We woke up early to start the big day. After a few hours of riding in the morning, we made it to a small hut in the mountains. A woman lived there on her own, and she farmed the goats in the area. She shared mate with us and let us hide from the sun under her tarp before we set out again for the peak. You'll be home in spring. The herd began to pick up speed as the day went on. Daniello explained that many of the horses have done this journey each season and know the way from here on their own. After a long and steep day of riding, we finally hit the snow line. The wind blowing so loud we couldn't even hear each other speaking. We'd made it to the final pasture, but there was too much snow this year to continue. Without warning, Daniello grabbed his horse and scrambled down towards the valley as we tried our best to push the herd after him. We didn't know what to do, but Daniello yelled back that it was too dangerous for us to go down and he would lead the herd as far as he could and they would know where to go from there. that moment, the cold nights, long days in the saddle, sunburn, sickness, sore asses, it all became worth it. I couldn't know what's in your mind. Gracias, amigo. Gracias. But I saw the pictures, you looking fine. And there was a time when I stood in line for love. But I let you go, oh, I let you go. And he fell apart with his broken heart and his blood, this blood, this blood. Oh, it drains from my skin, it does. Saca tu actitud de macho. Ah. Eso, eso. Camina, camina. Como que tú no lo has visto. Pregunta si te vimos un caballo por ahí. Buenos días. Buenos días, ah. chingón, hombre. Eso, muy bien, muy bien. Twenty eighteen, and we got Billy the Goat taking a big mean old line down the north face there. Yeah, he's repping atomic hooves and my oh my is he ever sending the dust in the air today in this hot Chilean heat. Just below we've got Billy the Kid Senior taking a mean old line above the couloir. Rebel Rampage Chili 2018. Check it out. I'm gonna show you guys how to canter. First you gotta find yourself a horse, preferably Chilean. Get yourself a nice saddle so your butt doesn't get destroyed. And then you go, yeah! 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 